obviously Dr. Mohamed Zabi. Uh, Dr. Mohamed Zabi is the one who uh, saw this case, uh, and uh, Dr. Mohamed Zabi is the one who gave me the opportunity to present here today. So I'm Dalai Mabhan, resident at the Department 14, uh, Dr. Ayman Mohamed unit. I'll present today a 30-year-old female. She presented with sudden bilateral pain and during the vision more poor far than near. Her past ocular history was insignificant, including no refractive errors, as we will discuss later. Her ocular medications included anti-glucoma that was prescribed elsewhere when she presented to us. On examination bilaterally, she had moderate stromal edema and the cornea. Her AC was uniformly shallow with peripheral intercorneal touch. The pupil was mid-dilated and irreactive. IP was high 25 and 26. Her frontus showed no significant glucomatous changes. Her refraction of negative 6 and negative 5, even though we mentioned she did not have any refractive errors before. And her vision was 360 by lateral. So is this the case of primary acute angle closure bilaterally at the same time? Or do we have any missing data? So on reviewing her systemic treatment, she was started drugs for trigeminal neurology five days ago. Going deeply into these drugs, they are all anti-convulsants medications. However, only one of them is a sulfur medication, which is the chromate. So again, revisiting our diagnosis. Is this a primary acute angle culture, or is this a secondary acute angle culture? So how can we differentiate? So in secondary acute angle culture, this is usually in middle age, because this is the age when they take these drugs for trigeminal neuralgia or for migraines. It's usually bilateral, since this is a systemic disease. It induces myopia, as we will discuss later. And the AC is uniformly shallow because the mechanism is primarily a non pupillary block. And therefore, there is no iris pathway. Her drug history will be significant for the causative agent. Whereas for primary acute angle closure, it's usually in older age, when the lens is larger enough to occlude the pupil. It's usually unilateral in high proper patients with shallow ACs. There's iris pathway because there's a pupillary block. And it's usually preceded by midriatic eye drops. On um, doing the UPM, it revealed that there is a ciliary body effusion in all quadrants, and two rolling of the ciliary body and rolling of the iris anteriorly causing an angle closure, as evident here in the diagram. So, how can we manage the case? Well, actually, the question should be what is the pathology so we can manage the case accordingly? It's suggested that the pulmonary Kenyan inflammatory process, accordingly, there is a ciliary cord with effusion. This results in ciliary body rotating anteriorly which pushes the LNS iris diaphragm anteriorly, occluding the angle and causing a myopic shift. Now, the myopic shift is not only by the lens moving forward, it's also because the lens zonules become loosened and this causes induced myopia. This is a diagram demonstrating effusion of the ciliary body and the chorate, as well as anterior rotation of the lens and the iris causing acute angle closure. Again, visiting our management, so stop to pyramate, put topical cyclophysics and steroids, such as atropine 1% twice daily, put aqueous suppressants plus, plus or minus acetazolamide, and give systemic steroids if it's refractory case. So let's go into more details on them to why. First of all, stop the cross, stop to pyramate. Second, it's because of anterior cellular body rotation, so give a topical cyclophysic. It's an inflammatory process, so give steroids. It's, the patient has high IOP, so give topical anti glucose medications, plus or minus systemic. It's an inflammatory process, is it refractory? They give systemic IV steroids, usually 250 milligrams uh, every six hours. In the management, we should always keep in mind to avoid meiotics, prostaglandins, and PI. Meiotics can further aggravate the case by causing further anterior rotation of the ciliary body. The prostaglandins will increase the inflammation, which is a suspected pathology behind this disease. And PI, it, there is no indication for it. However, a failed PI can help us uh, redirect our diagnosis, maybe it's a secondary, not a primary angle closure. So on starting this medication on day one, the corneal edema significantly improved. The IOP became 12 to 14, and her vision was 618. Refraction negative 3, and remember, she was negative 5 and negative 6. On week one, the IOP was 10, her vision was 6-6 six, six, back to normal with open angles, and her fraction was plus 1.5 and plus 1. This is the usual scenario. On, week, on day one, the IOP becomes normalized, and by week one, the vision becomes normalized. 
So is it that common? Because we tend to hear a lot about tocamaxotherapy, don't give it to patients, take care. Actually, it's an interesting product response, which means that it's very unlikely to occur. It's usually to sulfur drugs, and occurs in three out of 100,000 patients on tocamaxotherapy. If we look online, we'll find that most of the cases reported are case reports, hence it's rare. The exact mechanism of any closure remains unknown. However, as we said, it's probably an inflammatory process that causes serocoidal infusion and thus interrotational ciliary building. So the take home message here is that drug induced angle closure will be suspected in any patient with, future, with features of bilateral acute angle closure, myopic shifts, and uniformly shallow AC without iris bombing. UBM can be helpful in diagnosis, and the high index of suspicion is needed in these patients with a review of systemic treatment, which we sometimes tend to overlook. Thank you very much.